Well, hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be giving you 10 tips to get rid of hives. If you've ever dealt with hives, it is miserable. Hives are basically welts that can appear red in lighter skin tones, but in deeper skin tones, they may be a little bit darker in comparison to your background skin or a little bit lighter. Welts can be very small or they can be massive, covering like an entire arm or leg. They come and go. And each individual welt only lasts less than 20 24 hours and as a welt goes away, a new one pops up somewhere else. So it may seem as though the rash is spreading, but if you pay close attention, each individual welt only lasts usually a few hours. Hives can be very itchy, they also can feel hot, and in some cases can actually be uncomfortable and painful. Now in most cases, hives last mm, a few weeks and then spontaneously resolve, but hives lasting greater than six weeks are labeled as chronic urticaria or chronic hives. And that just means that there's maybe more likely a chance that there's an underlying issue going on and more investigation needs to be conducted to figure out what's going on and rule out other possibilities. My number one tip for getting rid of hives is to make an appointment with either a board certified dermatologist, an allergist, or your primary care doctor to make sure there isn't some underlying medical issue going on, especially if you've been dealing with hives for greater than six weeks. In many cases, the cause of hives is never identified, but in some cases, it can be due to an underlying medical problem, problem with a thyroid, an autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis, an allergy to a medication you may be consuming. So some blood work, a physical exam may be indicated. And then there are treatments that can be prescribed to control the hives and help them go away. Now hives, they can be triggered by a variety of things that you come in contact with or that maybe you ingest. So my number two tip is to keep a diary of your symptoms. Keep a diary of when you get hives because certain things may coincide with the development of hives and then you can identify what your triggers are. Do you get hives an hour or so after you eat? It may be something that you're ingesting. Additives and foods and cosmetics like dyes, certain preservatives, can also trigger hives. Vitamins, dietary supplements, all of these things. Keep a careful list of everything that you are ingesting or coming in contact with as it relates to the development of hives. Alcohol is a really common trigger for hives as well as flushing. Those of you with rosacea know that alcohol can be problematic. So you can see here this video, this woman has hives that are brought out just by having alcohol a few sips. And hers, interestingly enough, were in a segmental fashion. You can see with time they start to become more noticeable. Sorbic acid and cinnamon are common additives and flavorants and things like toothpaste that can trigger hives for some people. Do you take a medication or have you recently started a medication? Common culprit medications include antibiotics, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, aspirin. In rare cases, people can have hives triggered by cold exposure. When they go out in the cold, the hives actually appear though when they come back inside and the body begins to warm up. In other cases, some people can even get hives though if they are exposed to cold air from like an air conditioning while indoors. Heat can also be a trigger. On a warm day, ultraviolet radiation from the sun or a tanning bed can trigger hives. So if you notice that sitting by a window or going outside is a trigger and it's not particularly hot or particularly cold, well, it may actually be the sun. Some people's hives are triggered by vibration. Here you have a case of hives triggered by waxing or epilating the hair. You can see the little hives around the hair follicle where this patient has done waxing. Interestingly enough, she had no issue with hives when she used a chemical depilatory. So it's the waxing that is triggering these hives for her. Adrenaline, things that release adrenaline like stress, exercise, hot showers, and heat. One of the more common triggers for hives is actually pressure. Sitting too long, the pressure of a heavy purse strap on your shoulder. In rare circumstances, you can have hives triggered by exposure to water. So when you touch water, a few minutes later, you develop hives. Contact with certain plants can cause hives. So do your own sleuthing, keep a diary. This is gonna help you not only in figuring out what potential triggers there are, but when you are able to see your healthcare provider, it just gives you more information to provide to them so that they can help you out more easily. Number three is to take photographs of the hive. Because hives come and go, by the time you get in to see a doctor, nine times out of 10, the hives will not be active and you won't have any skin rash to show your doctor. So take a photograph. And I also suggest that not only do you take a photograph of the rash, but circle one of the individual hives. And once it goes away, then take another photograph and 
document how long it lasted. That is another really helpful piece of information to give to your doctor. Number four is a set of tips that revolve around really just relieving the symptoms of hives. Hives are often triggered by rubbing the skin. So when you get dressed, put your clothing on really, really slowly because if you briskly pull up your pants, that can elicit hives. Avoid tight clothing and try and avoid heat. I know that's difficult. Try and stay cool with a fan to circulate the air around. Cool compresses will alleviate the itch and help minimize the symptoms of hives. Try to not scratch because as you scratch, that is going to elicit more wheeling. In fact, if you have hives, you may notice that if you scratch the skin, you can actually write on yourself and your body will make hives in the shape of letters. That's called dermatographism. But regardless, try and avoid rubbing the skin. So if you have itch, the cool compress thing is super helpful for calming down the itch or a moisturizer with the active ingredient Promoxin. Promoxin is an anesthetic that can soothe itch. I happen to like the CeraVe itch relief cream with Promoxin and Aveeno makes one that's likewise very good. So I'll link those down below in the description box. The same skincare tips that I give to people with dry skin, I give to people with hives because dryness and irritation to the skin can elicit more hive formation. So keep your showers short and cool. Don't bathe in very hot water that dries out the skin, makes hives more likely to occur. And don't use harsh soaps. Only use soap where you have skin that's visibly soiled or in the skin folds. Number five, keep calm. <laughs> Try and manage your stress, but stress releases uh, adrenaline, which is a trigger for hives. So try and avoid unnecessary stress. Try and stay calm. A lot of people who are dealing with hives, as they start getting hives, they become very anxious, but stay calm. In fact, just build a little routine for yourself. Of, These are the things that I'm going to do when I develop hives. Apply cool compresses, calm myself down, take some deep breaths to manage stress. This will help shorten the duration of the hives. That leads me into my next tip. Don't obsess over the cause of the hives. So many patients get very fixated on trying to figure out why they have hives. At least 50% of cases, we never, ever, ever find a cause of the hives, but the treatments can still work to get rid of them and realize that a lot of times we simply don't find the cause and they just eventually go away. And I say don't obsess over it because that can be a source of tremendous stress and anxiety for people, which ultimately fuels the fire, quite literally, for more hives appearing. Number seven is to take the medications prescribed or recommended by your doctor exactly as directed. Antihistamines are given for the treatment of hives and they don't work if you just take them here and there or as needed. They need to be taken consistently to build up in your system and to quiet down the signals that lead to hive formation. If you just take them as needed or randomly or sporadically, it just doesn't work and you will end up being very frustrated. It might lead you to think that the medications aren't working. They really just need to be taken consistently. So if you're taking the medications exactly as directed and things are still not getting better, call your doctor because this is not uncommon for somebody to be given a, an antihistamine or a couple of antihistamines told to take it a certain way, they take it exactly and their symptoms don't get better. So go back to the doctor because a lot of times a few things need to be tweaked. Either the medication dosage needs to be increased or a medication needs to be swapped out or another medication needs to be added. And I think this causes a lot of stress for patients because they see that all of these medications are continuing to be prescribed and given for something whose cause is not identified. And that is simply the nature of how this is treated. We continue to add on antihistamines to soothe and quiet down the signals that lead to the flare of the hives. And with time, they eventually, in most cases, burn out. However, there is another medication that's not an antihistamine that can be given for chronic hives. It's called omalizumab or Zolaire. And this medication is more specific in how it targets the hive formation. So a lot of people who struggle and struggle with chronic hives, they're put on all the antihistamines. It doesn't work then they end up being candidates for this medication and it certainly can help those folks. But if you're dealing with hives, do you know that in many, in the vast majority of cases, eventually they do burn out. Number nine is resist the urge to request for more allergy testing. I've got to tell you, when it comes to hives, allergy testing, for the most part, it rarely, if ever, provides any information that is useful because unless your hives are specifically associated with a certain food like 
that you like a nut that you eat and immediately you know shortly thereafter you always develop hives i mean it's it is yes i take the i i'm exposed to this i get a hive is it an allergy in those cases then allergy testing is helpful simply to convert confirm an allergy but to just do wide batteries of allergy testing for this condition it's not helpful it's not recommended by the allergy allergists the American Academy of Dermatology does not recommend it. Only in certain situations is allergy testing going to be helpful. And you can end up spending a lot of money on allergy tests, it's not useful. So if you have hives and you're like, is this a food allergy? And you go and you get allergy testing, you're gonna get positives. That's the thing. When you go down the rabbit hole of allergy testing, you will get test results that are positive, but it's not specific for the hives. It doesn't necessarily mean that those positives are problematic for you. It doesn't actually prove that it is the cause of your hives and it can lead to a lot of undue stress where people then start trying to avoid all of these foods. They go on very restrictive diets, which can actually end up being harmful. Provided you had a thorough medical workup to rule out an underlying medical cause, you've had blood work, age appropriate cancer screening, a lot of times there really is just no answer. My final tip when it comes to dealing with this and coping with it is to remember that in the majority of cases, this does go away and half of patients who have chronic hives the hives will spontaneous spontaneously resolve within a year and medication can be helpful not only in controlling but in getting rid of the problem even if we don't know the cause that's the other reason to kind of make peace with not necessarily identifying the cause because the path of treatment is not necessarily going to be much different. So it doesn't really change management a lot of times to chase after additional testing. So those are my tips. I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments, do you deal with chronic hives? The medical term for that is urticaria. In the description box, I'm going to link my video on dermatographism, skin writing, which you may deal with as well. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.